Hey everyone, it's Tim at Falconite and I'm back with more, well, with my second match from A Mariner Cup 1. Uh, this, this, I just got finished with it and I, I swear to god, this was, this was a bit of a tense match, for quite a bit, um, and yeah, honestly, I'm surprised that I was able to get through this. I was, I was kind of dreading it a little bit because it's, it was a tier one match, and I, I kind of despise tier one because of this guy vulnerable, and I just hate playing him. I hate playing as him. I play, hate playing against him, and the reason for that is sort of twofold. It's mainly because. Let's open up the steel list here. Uh, well, I can get up here. That's what else. So, the main reason is this stupid 10% difference. Like, Javier also has it. Um, he also gets 10% uh, when Veracon powers around. But, like, because Von Bolts um, in tier 1 2, it ends up being that, like, most maps where you can do Javier, you can also do Von Bolt and Von Bolt's down and do better. Because if it's a small map like this and you need a defense for it, you sort of want to go Von Bolt instead of Javier. Unless it's like 2 con power, that sort of... But if, that, if it's 2 con power, honestly Javier is sometimes banned because it's just busted on 2 con power. But, um... Yeah, if it's a small map like Creedence Justidium, um, that Hawk can't really do too much on, and that the uh, defense, the day-to-day -day defense becomes a lot more important on. Um, yeah, you sort of want to go. You're sort of forced to go long bolt. Um, but it honestly, this match did. I hate long bolt, but I honestly sort of know how to deal with him a little bit better now just from prepping for this match and playing it. So this this was a very fun match. Um, credit to my opponent, Conan HDX. I'm pretty sure he's better than me overall. Um, it's just, I ended up outplaying him on this map specifically, but he's a good player as well, so. Um, but yeah, this is Freedoms, it's got Airports in all the corners, it's got these two bases which are close enough to the center that you can like um, send tanks to these center property things uh, from each of these bases respectively. You can get from here to here and then from here to here. Um, and because of that, that makes it sort of okay to build recons here to contest these properties. Um, Especially because you can send them left here and bring your opponent's um, infantry and stuff. Because you are you sort of have two bases here, so you're basically going to be pumping infantry out of this base and just sending it north. So if you send like a recon to back them up, that helps them out a lot as well. Um, well, it can help out a lot as well. Because, um, well, the main reason why you're able to do, you're able to push into this area with recons specifically is because of Von Bolt. That's, that's it. That's the only reason you're able to do it. Um, because, yeah, this is on. If you look at the damage here from tanks into recons on roads, it's actually not a kill. It's actually not a kill, even with a combo. Which is insane. Because Von Bolt has plus 20% fire, but he's, he's still not able to um, one shot the recon. Like, recons are. Honestly, they're pretty good. <laughs> Just defense, because they cost. They're good against infantry, and then your opponent needs to uh, divert a tank attack into the recons uh, in order to take them out. And it's hard enough to take out. Von Bolt tanks as it is. Like, um, you can't even wall break into them if they're on cities, but even if they're like on forests or um, even planes, it's still not that good for engagement. Like, they, they survive with a good amount of health and stuff. Um, 
So yeah, the other thing that's interesting about Von Bolt is that you can wall break sort of with him if you have an artillery, like an artillery plus a full health tank shot. Um, it's actually technically not guaranteed due to the luck rules, but it's it's basically guaranteed. Let's be real. It's it's base. It's it's the minimum damage on it is not even like you're not gonna be you're like almost never gonna be used so long if you get one. Um, and yeah, that's basically what this like this map has six labs. But they kind of go pretty fast if you aren't careful about them. Um, and it's, it mainly revolves against engagement in the center area. It's very easy to overextend. Um, but honestly, if you overextend and you have a good amount of units, like you're sort of able to push in here. And then if your opponent doesn't have any enough units in this area or like a Von Bolt Super to counteract, it, counteract that, um, you can just base plot them pretty easily if your opponent pretty easily. If you're if you're aggressive enough, if you have a good enough aggressive push from the center, so. Um, oh, also, these airports are here mainly to provide an extra couple of runs here where you can pour money. But honestly, it's not that worth it to start spamming stuff from there, as you will see from this replay at some point. Um, and yeah. Uh, no stealth. I mean, stealths are allowed, but like, they're so expensive, it doesn't matter if you got a map analysis. Um, the total income on this map is like 38, so 19. If you're if you're in a dead tie, it's 19k per player, and stealths are like 24 plus. Well, it's a small enough map that you don't really need APCs, um, but. It's basically 24. Well, you can't even afford a 24. That's weird. You can't even really even afford like a bomber or a EOT. Not much of it still. So, um, yeah, that's basically everything I wanted to cover before I started the replay. So, uh, let's get started with the replay. Um, obviously, going for very good basic infantry moves to start out with. Um, this is a pretty good chain. You chain infantry into this city and then into the comm tower and then you basically have enough time to do that uh, before you actually start fighting in the center. So that's important. Um, the other thing that's important is you go for this city, I mean this base to start out with the, and then you also go for this city from this base and then from this city you can chain um, into this river and then into these two properties here. You don't really want to waste your time with the infantry from here to send it south here. You want to just send it north to um, contest these properties as early as you can. And then you sort of have a um, option of where you want to go with your infantry from this base. Um, you eventually want to send one down this way to start grabbing these guys, but you also want to get start like pumping as much infantry as you want as you can towards the center here to start out with because it's this this air this property specifically is very very contested. You want to get into that as soon as you can. Yes. You saw that the uh, the day three recon. Why did I do that? Because I'm it's bright as this city here. And that's gonna end up being super important. Um, now, because of Von Bolt's defense, my opponent is going to be able to just um, take this with the joint cap anyways, because I don't have enough air, um, infantry in the area to like overwhelm him quite yet. Um, plus, I didn't start out with the firepower increase, but like my point is, you know, if, if you if you don't really know how damage stacks in advance orders, you might go. Wait a second. This is impossible. <laughs> At first glance. Um, but you have to take into account the luck damage from this infantry um, into this recon. So he did 5% luck damage with this infantry, which is actually a good amount, considering that he didn't have the calm power last turn, and uh, it's half health. 
So he got pretty lucky to be able to pop me down to half health there. And when I saw him, I was like, well, what the fuck? How is he doing that much damage? Like, normally you don't see Recons do nearly this much damage to each other. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> If that ended up happening. So he's able he's gonna be able to because of that lucky those lucky votes, he is actually gonna be able to confirm this capture. Which was which ended up being very annoying, but it's not gonna end up mattering too too much in the grand scheme of things. I, I just go for another extra there. And then I get a tank here to back up my recon. So he, he sort of has to fall go somewhere else with that recon. Um, and what he does with it is he he just interrupts this cap. Well, actually, no, he takes out this infantry, which I think is more important here. Uh, because I'm at two health anyways, like, it's not gonna, it's not gonna matter. I can't, I can't do anything with this infantry at this point. And he goes for the, um, he went for the artillery last turn as well. This artillery, I feel like it's the MVP of this match, even though he ended up losing still. But, like, this, this freaking artillery was such a good, he did so good with it. It was such a good artillery. Um... But yeah, I fall back here to get a little bit more repairs so that he might not be able to one-shot it with the tank, but like... Um, yeah, and then I go for the second recon. And the reason I go for the second recon is to force out the artillery here. And the artillery... Um, before you go, well, maybe you should go out of the tank so that you, can, you can't just push it out with the recon and the tank here. Well, he, he couldn't afford the tank plus two infantry. So that's why you opted for the artillery. Plus the artillery is going to be just super, super valuable. Yeah, on this map specifically. It's, in, it's insane how good artillery are here. Um, it, it's just really insane how good artillery are here. Once you get them into position. And it takes like only one turn to get them into position. But they cover so much area here. Um, but I am able to move around this artillery relatively consistently. Sort of. And because I have so many recons, that's sort of making it so he can't really build any more artillery. So I kick him off of there, I guarantee this cap, actually, like this. Um, he isn't even able to get the first strike on this tank, because I got this infantry here. And then I just move these guys to the right so that he can't really advance past this property. And it's forcing him to build more tanks as well. Um, he's got, and then he's, he's sort of keeping this guy back for right now, which is smart. I can't really attack into it with this tank. I can't really attack into anything in this area with this tank actually right now. So this is a very good defensive play, but it is allowing me to, like he has the income lead right now, but I'm about to flip that and I'm about to start advancing in a lot of these areas as well. Especially like down here. With these two infantry, this, well actually three infantry that I'm diverting to this area. So. <laughs> Honestly, in Hans hindsight, it's kind of weakening my presence in the middle here, because he's got a big infantry ball over here that he's going to be able to just push into the center with. But I, I want to get this income up as soon as I can. He gets a really good, sh a decent shot here, shot off here, but like, even on Shoals here, he's still... He's still not even able to do that. And uh, it is tanks, but like you have plus 25, 20% 20, 20 fire. Because, uh, put that into perspective, like, tank into tank is, should be doing like around 60% survival, right? It should be doing 70% to literally anyone else. So, like, and you were able to repair from four to like more than half, which is a pretty good benchmark for tanks. Is like if you're at more than half, you're doing pretty well. You're doing your, your tank is still really serviceable. Even like a four health or a three health tank is fine. But like, as long as you're at that half, you're still doing fine. You're just doing pretty well. So um, I guard you know, the tank with this recon, and then I just. Decides to move in with the tank on this guy, mainly because he's not going to be able to artillery and follow up with the tank to kill the tank here. 
<laughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, that's why I went for this and the push with the recon as well, just because I'm going into artillery range with, with these two units anyways, may as well give them an extra target to fire. Um, I go for these two lab captors, which... Basically, with this top one, I was trying to draw him into attacking with his infantry here. So I would be able to just take out the infantry, but he, um, he lets me take him because it's, he still has the central lab, it's not going to end up that way. Too, too much. And then the artillery shot here is pretty killer. Uh, he's able to do a good number on... Well, actually finish off my infantry and the recon there. And actually start... Capping the center here, which is a little, which is interesting, but because I attacked with um, my weakened unit into this guy, he's not actually able to burn in a cap next turn, which is important. It's very important because I'm going to be able to maintain my hold of this city at the center here for quite a little while. Um, so I clear that cap like that, and then I move in like this with the tank here. Um, in hindsight, this wasn't the best move. I should have just attacked with the infantry and then had my tank in the back here, probably on like this forest, maybe, or just even on this plane so that you can't go any further here with his tanks. Um, because he's going to be able to just artillery, and then with this tank, he's going to be able to finish off the tank here. So that's that's a bit of a throw, and then I pivot this guy left to take care of these two recons here. So I gotta s send something to do off these recons. Um, honestly, I feel like he's spamming the recons a little bit too much, even though they are good as bow and bolt. Um, these are pretty good recons, but, so I'm not gonna like, knock them too hard. And then I go for the anti air here. I should have probably swapped these two builds. Because I would be, I'm gonna be able to, like, I need, I need to stay out of the battlecopter's range this turn. But I'd be able to zone out basically the same area if I had, had my anti-air here and then moved it here. Uh, and then I'd be able to move in with the tank this turn. But it's gonna, it's gonna make me play a little bit more defensively here. Which, honestly, it's gonna end up being for the best probably. But we'll see. Moves in with the infantry for weakening it, and then he's lining up this cover of cap. Take out his infantry there, like that. Um, probably should have opened with the anti air shot there, but for... And then I push like that. I take out the tank actually, which is pretty good because it allows me to move in and weaken this infantry, I believe is what I end up doing. Well, oh, actually, no, I go into the lab. And then I just build more tanks because I'm sort of thoroughly lacking tanks in the center here. I gotta sort of try and match his tanks up here. Uh, and I'm interrupting this cap just to be annoying. And to deny him income mainly. So, plus I've got these two infantry to this city. And I can fall into this city with this full health infantry in a second. So he, he gets a very good push here. Um, takes out like two tanks, three tanks. A good chunk of my infantry. Uh, this recon play is good as well because he's blocking me from advancing in this, into this area with it. Plus he's going to pivot his artillery here so it's covering this entire area. Meaning that if I attack, if I want to take out the annoying recon, um, I'm going to basically lose the tank in response for that. Plus, because he's playing around this um, forest here, I can't actually really attacking so much with these two tanks um, which is which is super irritating like it's very annoying this this forest is like just far enough away that you can't really get much mileage out of it these two properties it's very irritating um i basically guarantee this capital piece of infantry here unless he wants to like to keep he could divert a tank over here in order to interrupt the cap here. Which honestly, he might have wanted to do, considering how far ahead I am in Um But he goes for 
A very good push here. He takes off this guy with the artillery, plus the tank. And then he just goes a little ham here. He goes with the battlecopter, uh, a tank even, into the anti-air. It's not that good of a shot that he gets off here. Um, is that luck? I think it's based on luck. Yeah, he, get, he, he didn't get the lucky shot, but like it's not that unlucky to not get the lucky shot there. No. So, yeah, this was a very good push, but unfortunately, it also gave me a good amount of meter. Well, unfortunately, we back on it, so. I'm able to cap both these properties. I might not have wanted to do that, because I might have wanted to, inter wanted to interrupt this guy, as you'll see in a second. Um, but I'm able to do that, plus that, and then pop my superpower. I, I gotta say, I spent like at least 10, 20 minutes in move planner double checking this move just to make sure I got this correct. And um, that's, that's the very annoying thing about have, playing Von Bolt. You have to do that, um, especially once the meter gets high enough that this is in, uh, it's, it's possible that this happens. Um, that's why I went for the attack on the this tank is to neuter it because it's going to be one of the few things that can move in the center here um, after the superpower. Um, and then I just go ahead, move in like that. And then take out as much as I can on this side as well. So there's that. Um, I could have gone, oh yeah, I threw the infantry away there trying to get a shot into this guy. Um, two up infantry into the city like that, especially against like one bolt. If this weren't one bolt, I would have been able to interrupt. But again, von Bolt fire his defense just coming in clutch at the map on here. Um, and it's not going to end up mattering because like, sure, I could have gone for the interrupt with this guy. Um, but what that would have done would have been, it, it honestly would have just delayed the capture for a Well, actually, oh, you know what? I could have not have It would have just delayed the capture for a turn because he's after a week on here to take out my infantry in response. And, like, I'm not going to be able to take this in a turn, anyways. Um, well, if he doesn't want me to. Uh, because he got the tank here. He's got this infantry here, technically, as well. Um, he's got the battle doctor. So he'd be able to interrupt this if he wanted to. Um, and, like, it would have been funny to go for, to do the Solen by Lab capture on day 14. Um, but, like, it's it wasn't guaranteed, so I just went for the income here because that way I'll be able to uh, better just spawn them out that way. And then, and then just overwhelm him with the income and such. And even now, What's crazy is even now, well, actually, no, that's after his turn. But even now, it's like not that, he isn't that far behind in income and stuff. Um, well, actually, what I wanted to do is show off the move planner for this turn. I, I needed to check this basically every turn. Because he would be able to pop his super here, and then this was where it ended up landing. Yeah, that's it. I was very specific about how I played to make sure that I would basically just go here. And this is honestly the best thing I had that the income I had there. Because I needed the tanks in order to finish off his tanks next turn. So had, in the event that he had gotten the 7k in order to be able to um, pop his power uh, this turn, which I don't know if he would have been able to do. I think if he had suicided this recon into the tank, he might have been able to do it. Um, like, barely. But... Or into the battle copter here, too. He could have done it. But honestly, like, at that point, like... 
it doesn't matter too much. Like, it's it would it would have prevented a lot of these guys in the center from dying. Would have been important. Um, but it also would have, like, I also would have had free reign in the center after that because then I wouldn't be threatened by his um, power anymore. So, yeah, I had to move. I had to pivot the anti-air to the right here mainly so that, like, I couldn't finish this guy off because. Um, if I had, um, I'm actually going to show off the plate over here. But if I had finished off this guy, um, with the anti-air, it would have moved his superpower missile from here, where it's only affecting like that, to there. And that would have been like just devastating, so I needed to make sure that I didn't. I need to make sure that I spread my units out a little bit so that he couldn't just pop his power. And honestly, like at this point, he sort of needs to because I'm starting to build up meter again. I've got an income lead, I've got a value lead, I've got a unit count lead. He needs something to happen. So by locking my base here and doing a good amount of damage to this tank and this medium tank as well, um, that might have been able to. He might have been able to. Um, push the odds back into his favor by doing that. Because he got the medium tank in this area as well, doing stuff. But I'm able to just move in like this for free against him instead. So, um, I'm able, yeah, the main reason why he should have popped his super that turn is because at this point, not only isn't he, like he would have had an extra 10% attack defense as well this turn, which would have been huge. It would have made it so that I couldn't really attack into his medium tank. Um, it would have base locked this medium tank and would have drained my funds, so I wouldn't be able to do the build that I do this turn. And it's a, I'm able to just build up extra meter, whereas he's stuck there. He can't build any more meter. Um, so that, those are all important reasons why you should have popped it last turn. Uh, but instead, I'm able to do this. The whole helicopter. And I'm able to just start uh, pumping out helicopters and pushing for the win here. Um, like his medium tanks at half health, it doesn't matter anymore. And they would just like it's able to do some stuff here, but it's not. Good. And because this is this of uh, this annoying forest, like you saw how it was very annoying for me to for me last turn because I wasn't able to move in with my tanks effectively. Well, it's very annoying for him as well because it means his anti air isn't covering his medium tank, and that's 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 like the last straw here. Is it's that's going to force him to forfeit in like a second here is um, his medium tank is at 2 health and it didn't really accomplish much honestly I think it took out like maybe two tanks um so yeah, and then, yeah I have the medium tank in the tank here to draw the fire from his power there but also like, he resigns here um, I guess I could look at the mute planner for his power last turn. But yeah, this is all it would do. It's not going to interrupt this. It's not going to interrupt my battle crafters, which are going to be able to pivot just this way. So he's basically screwed. I'm, I'm actually able to start airport locking him a little bit here. Um, and as you can see here, my stats actually aren't that crazy. Like. KD wise and value wise, we're about even. It's just due to how, due to when and how I was able to get my um, push there, I was able to just turn it around completely and basically demolish him. Um, technically, he has enough money to get a battlecopter here. Um, the only issue is like, I'm gonna. No, oh, you know what? You know what the issue is here? I'm gonna freaking win my lab cap. <laughs> That's what the issue is here. That's why he resigned. It's the main reason why he resigned, honestly. Um, like, he's not gonna even be able to interrupt this fully with these two. Um, but, and yeah, I'm gonna be able to airport block. I'm gonna be able to just join cap here and move in with like the battlecopter even. So it's it's over at this point. 
Uh, my opponent did a very good job of trying to fend me off until the very end, which is admirable of him. Uh, he's a good player. I think he's better than me overall. Like that push into the center here. Honestly, I should have never allowed that to happen. <laughs> so it's, it's not like it was some counter IQ bait to get him to overextend with a ball of units so that I was able to turn around everything with the superpower. No, that's just that's just how that happened because I misplayed in the center and I, I completely underestimated how good the year to like that artillery, that artillery did so much damage. The artillery did so much damage this entire match. It was insane. It, this, this this little artillery, the MVP. It it guarded the uh, lab here till the last, till its last breath. It's it did a good job. F and chat for the thing here. You get chat artillery. You will be missed. Um. But yeah, I feel like me being able to just hold the center here, income-wise, for like so long is main, the main reason why I was able to win. Like, you may look at this turn three recon play, and you might go, what the fuck is he doing? And then, yeah, just being able to play off of my opponent's income as well, like I was able to, um, Push him relatively easily here because he wasn't able to just get a tank here and take me off of here. But I think honestly, base skipping here might have been the play because uh, I wouldn't have been able to be able to a tank on my turn. Well, actually, I was able to build a tank on my turn. But I wasn't able to tank chain. Um. And he would have been able to either... Honestly, player 2 does have a decent advantage now that I look at... Now, now that I think about it on this map. So, there's that aspect of it too. I don't think it's that significant though. Um, because I, I didn't, wasn't able to get the comm powers before he... That's another thing that sort of makes it even. And I think it... Like he was able to push very well into the center here and he almost had me. The only The only reason he didn't have me here was because of my superpower. If I didn't if I were playing Bomb Bolt, I, I think he would have been able to just keep on pushing and base lock me here. Like turn 14 or so. So yeah. And that's basically it for today's match. So um next match it's gonna be on this map it's finale it's basically a tier three map if you look at the co bands you might notice something interesting and the reason for that something interesting um, is the fact that it's a base like that even though it's super small and super exploitable think of that funny little thing you might notice here um but yeah i'll go i'll go into that in more detail once this match is actually over. Um, which, honestly, it's gonna be a while. Like, this match is, let's see, 24. Honestly, this match is still gonna be a little while. It's day 11 and it's Kindle versus Flash. So yeah, no, he, he wasted all his power. Um, the value is about even, but Flash has a significant unit count advantage, so... It, it might be a little while on this one. But then after that, so it, it's going to be a little while for this one to finish, it's going to be a little while for this to actually get done. So it's it's going to be a week or so probably before I'm even able to start this match. Um, so don't expect, don't expect this one to come out right away. Um, but in order to make sure that you do catch this match once it eventually comes out, uh, make sure to so like, subscribe, and all that nonsense. It, um, it helps out my channel, even though it's a small channel and it's a casual thing that I do, but it's still fun. So, um, yeah, that's it. That's it for today. I will see you guys eventually.
Burvis next match. So, oh, and also for Road to 1K, it's all just coming out uh, for I think it's at five east, well five central. So um, you can you can have that tie you over in the meantime. Um, but yeah, that's about it. See you guys later. Bye.